and he had sin, this chasm of sin that was separating us from God. And then he opened up the Bible and he had me read this verse. This is the first verse that I remember reading from the Bible. I grew up in a Jewish home just outside of New York City. And, and uh, I don't ever remember reading, reading the Bible and, and uh, uh, certainly not understanding it. It says, <clears throat> Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I looked at him and I said, I'm not a sinner. And he said, you know, he was a bit taken back by that. And in modern secular Judaism, the background that I came from, we didn't think about sin very much. We didn't dwell on it. You can go to the synagogue once a year and, and, and uh, uh, on Yom Kippur and, and you're good to go. I never really thought much about this. And I said, look, how can I be a sinner? I never killed anyone and I never robbed a bank. So then he had me read another verse from the Bible. And it says in Matthew 5, 28, But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now that really hit me. Not only was I 18 years old at the time, but I was addicted to pornography. I had become addicted to pornography at the age of 14. And I was working on the Hutchinson River Parkway and these gas stations going into and out of the city on each side of the road. And, and uh, my first job at the age of 14 was to clean the parking lots. And I noticed that the men would throw away their magazines on Friday nights on their way home from, from uh, their work week. And I picked up these magazines and I became quickly addicted. And when I read that verse, it was the first time in my life I was ever convicted of my sin. Everybody has something that convicts them of their sin. When I saw that I was convicted of my sin, this was a new experience for me and it really hit me. Then he had me read another verse from Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. And I remember he drew this arrow. He said, people try many good works to try to get them over to God, but it's never sufficient. The Bible says that our good works are not sufficient, won't get us to God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I didn't even know that there was such a claim on the table. And he drew this cross that bridged this gap, and he had me read this, <clears throat> this verse. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How can any thinking man or woman believe in a physical resurrection from the dead? I mean, we don't have a whole lot of data points on that. I've never seen that happen. How can you believe that? Unless God has placed it within the heart of every man and woman. And I'm amazed because I've shared this with many people over these last 40 years since I first heard this. And I'm amazed at the number of people that will say to me, I can believe Jesus Christ is risen from the dead.